Hi everybody, I uh, thought we'd take a look at the Fusion Damage Trim Procedural Assembly Preset. Double clicking on that preset in the Add Item popover brings it into our scene. And in this scene, I have a, a simple Fusion item consisting of a cylinder and a box. The rest of what you see here, all of this stuff, are the components of the assembly including uh, a number of individual meshes, which will become subtracted fusion trims, and this plane, which is the target mesh of a UV transform mesh op. So these individual meshes are being mapped into the UV space of the plane. Using the UVs of an independent mesh, like this plane, turns out to be more flexible uh, and convenient than, say, trying to use the UVs of the fusion items source meshes. Those UVs, uh, you know, might not be present or uh, will likely be discontinuous, especially when you uh, want to uh, spread the damage across multiple source meshes. Any mesh with UVs may be used as the target. The preset comes with this simple plane, plus two more planes that themselves are procedural. One with a bend deformer, and one featuring a transform deformer with a spherical falloff, which is good for creating uh, simple curved surfaces. Naturally, the uh, cluster of trim meshes will go wherever the UV target mesh goes. So, in item mode, we can position, orient, uh, scale uh, that cluster in any desired fashion. Uh, I've not yet uh, applied these meshes as subtractive trims, so no trimming is taking effect, but you can also transform the trims after uh, they become part of the Fusion model. So let's go ahead and uh, turn these meshes into subtractive trims. They are all children of the F Damage Cluster locator, as seen here in the item list. There are 16 meshes, and uh, naturally, you uh, are not uh, required to use all of them. Uh, and if you need uh, more than 16, multiple copies of the assembly may be used on any particular Fusion model. So, with all of the trim meshes selected, we also select all uh, primaries we wish to trim. And, uh, just as with any other Fusion modeling, we use the Set Mesh Roll and Apply buttons in this case a subtractive, to add that new geometry to the Fusion model. As we see here, the uh, newly added trims have been color-coded magenta in the item list. And uh, if we go ahead and hide those meshes, we can uh, see the results more clearly. We get a fair bit of detail and complexity with those 16 meshes. And further uh, variation in detail is possible by using different source meshes and additional mesh ops that we haven't applied here. Uh, those are things we'll explore in another video. Let's try the same damage on a different part of the Fusion model. I've enabled the Fusion items deferred updating to make editing more fluid. So we don't see the relocated damage until I let the mouse up. Now this is a bit odd, the way the damage plunges into the top of the cube. Interesting in its own way, but odd. So let's look at getting it to conform more naturally to the shape of the geometry. In this case, a bent plane will allow us to get the trims nestled into this valley where the cylinder and the cube meet. All of the trim meshes share the same set of procedural mesh ops. So to edit them all, we need only select one. Doing so, we see that those mesh ops are found in this Fusion Damage folder. The mesh op we are interested in is the UV Transform. More specifically, it's Target Mesh. Currently, that's set to this simple plane, but we can easily switch it with this Switch button. And, as mentioned earlier, a, a procedural bent plane is included in the assembly, here in the F Damage UV Targets folder. And there you see it in the scene. Uh, and let's also make 
all of the uh, trim meshes visible so that we can uh, see what happens when we switch the target. So back in mesh ops, and remember these mesh ops are shared by all of the trim meshes, we find that target and switch it to our new one, F damage UV edge 90. And we see our trim meshes jump to that new target mesh. And uh, you notice that the fusion item uh, didn't update, uh, but that's really a very little concern because it will update uh, once we do any sort of fusion editing. We'll go ahead and hide our original uh, UV transform target mesh and go about uh, positioning and orienting the new one. And, and by the way, this 90 degree band, that's just what the deformer set to by default. Uh, obviously, you can change that. Uh, but in any case, once we've got it in place, uh, we can see our new uh, updated damage, which now uh, better conforms to the geometry. Okay, well, that, uh, that pretty much covers the basics, uh, hopefully enough to get you started. There is certainly more to talk about and uh, more videos to come. See you next time. Thanks.